your attention please ladies and gentlemen as the best man the responsibility now falls upon my shoulders to make a little speech however before i do so i would like to pass you over to the blushing bride my sister gretel who is going to say a few words thank you hansel <clears throat> Good evening, everyone, and thank you for coming to my wedding. I just want you all to know that I am not one of those ultra-modern brides who seem to feel an insatiable desire to fly in the face of time-honored tradition by standing up and giving a speech at her own wedding reception. <gasps> I recently watched a news report about how more and more brides are giving wedding speeches nowadays, and I think it's a disgrace. If a bride feels the need to stand up in front of all guests and yammer on at them in her silly, musy voice, she obviously has the wrong attitude towards marriage. I find it absolutely appalling that modern women are moving further and further away from their traditional roles in married life. I, for one, intend to spend my entire marriage doing the things a wife should do. I'll be cooking Folly's meals, darning his socks, I think you mean his tights, don't you? <laughs> and polishing his bells until the day I die, and I'll be doing so gladly. I know my place. In the kitchen, a woman should be a cook. In the living room, a woman should be a maid. And in the bedroom, a woman should be a... Folly! <laughs> Being quiet awaits your own speech. Now, as I was saying, women who go against their husbands in any way are pure evil and they should be ostracized by civilized society. Thank you. Now then, also on the subject of tradition, it has long been the job of the best man to make an amusing yet heartwarming speech about the groom. In doing this, I want it to be as original as possible. So, what can I say about folly that has never been said before? Well, he's a highly amusing and skilled entertainer. Quite <laughs> <laughs> folly, he's just lampooning you. This is duty as your best man. When I first met folly, I must confess that I could not stop myself from punching him in the face. Ah, but how times change. When I see him now, I do not feel even the slightest urge to punch him in the face. Just the stomach. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, what can I say about folly that you might find interesting? Something about his past, perhaps. I'm sure all of you know about his numerous and varied adventures in and around Nightmare Castle. But what did he do before that? Well, once he was a wizard of a sort, but now his power is so diminished that he is reduced to the role of a jester. He has no spells, so he just has to play things by ear the whole time. And yet the funny thing is, that's the reason why he's stronger now as a fool than he ever was as a wizard. Plagiarism. I'm gonna sue your ass, you stinking sausage sucker! What is this? Who is so rudely interrupting my speech? That's right. Pretend you don't recognize me. They all do that. Oh my goodness, it's Tim Child! Uh oh! Who invited that drunken old hack? I demand full and immediate restitution. That account of Folly's backstory was lifted directly from my best-selling 1988 fantasy novel, Nightmare. You mean, can you beat the challenge? No! For Christ's sake, that's just a question to entice prospective readers. Any fool can see that's not part of the title. Well, you must realize how it might be slightly confusing for some people to see it written in the exact same style as the titles of the next three books in the series, so... Shut it, you! You think I don't know who you are? You think you can just rip off my work and get away with it? You've been doing this kind of thing for years. Don't try to deny it. It's plagiarism. 
pure and simple. It's not plagiarism, it's homage. Don't you know the difference? Or perhaps you do, and you are merely trying to divert suspicion onto me instead of yourself, yeah? What on earth are you banging on about, Fritz? Well, everyone knows you can't write a decent fantasy adventure novel without Dave Morris holding your hand every step of the way. I bet it was he who wrote that stuff about folly, wasn't it? Admit it, child. Dave Morris was the one I paid homage to. What? Oh, bloody have you! Oh my goodness! Um, security? Yes, Gov. Eject this delusional vino from the premises, will you? Right, you are, Gov. No! Get your hands off me! What do you think you do? You can't do this to me! I'm Tim Child! Where would you be without me? Where would any of you be without me? Nowhere! Elsewhere? Nowhere! Well, that was somewhat unpleasant. But never mind. We mustn't let it spoil the day. So, back to my speech. Ah, I seem to have run out of things to say about folly, so I shall have to come at this from a different angle. Hmm. Well now, let us see who else has blessed us today with the pleasure of their company. Ah, Toyguard is here. How good of you to take time out from your important duties as Dungeon Master of Nightmare, my lord. I see you have dressed in your finest for the occasion, yeah? Seeing you like this reminds me. We had a phone call from Kim Kardashian just before the reception. She said to tell you that she wants her trousers back. <laughs> yeah, I don't think black leather is a very good look for you, Trigard. Ah, and who is that you are sitting with? Unless I am much mistaken, it's the winner of this year's Wound Europe's stupidest, longest, whitest beard competition. <laughs> ah, nine, my mistake. It is Merlin. Yeah, of course it is. Thank you for coming, Merlin. And you, Draegard. You know I am just teasing, don't you? Gretel is stealing all my material. I was supposed to be making fun of the guests. Well, you may have got to fill it, Bully. Look at Draegard and Merlin. I don't think they liked what Hansel had to say at all. Can you believe the cheek of that kraut, Merlin? Indeed I can't, Draegard. To think he has the front to make fun of my trousers while he's standing up there wearing rhinestone-encrusted lederhosen. Stupidest, longest, whitest beard indeed. I'll get him for that. I'll... I'll... I'll turn him into a black forest gatto. So, ladies and gentlemen, let us now drink some toast. A toast? Yes. A toast to the bride and groom, my younger sister Gretel, now Mrs. the Jester, and Folly, her pied joker of Hamburg. God bless you both. Cheers. And now I think it's my turn to talk, isn't it, Hansel? Yeah. First of all, I'd like to say how grateful I am to each and every one of you for coming here to share our special day. Some of my oldest and dearest friends are here today. Like Treyguard, with whom I shared such a thrilling adventure to reclaim Nightmare Castle so many years ago. Although, perhaps I should mention, Treyguard, that we've just had Cheryl Cole on the phone and... Oh. Uh, yes. I guess i better skip that bit. Um, well, life certainly is different here in Germany to how it is back in good old Nightmare Castle. There's the cuisine for a start. Now, I'm not saying you eat too many sausages around these parts. But when this hotel suggested a wedding breakfast consisting of sausage soup for a starter and sausage surprise for a main, I must admit that I was slightly taken aback. I was going to go along with their suggestions though, until I heard that dessert was going to be something called sausage crumble. Whew, yes, it's true. And uh, they wanted us to drink the toast with erding a beer instead of champagne. Oh dear, well, perhaps I'd better wrap this up now. But I'd just like to finish by saying that I must be the happiest jester in the world today. Gretel is my one true love, 
and marrying her has always been my most burning ambition. I once lost my laughter on her account because she is the light of my life, and without her there is no joy in my soul. Gretel, my heart is yours. Do with it what you will. And although some might think it risky to say that to a girl who shoved an old lady into an oven and baked her alive when she was only nine years old, it's a risk I'm ready and willing to take. Aww. Oh, Polly! And on that note, we invite you all to drink and be merry and dance the night away. But first, some pudding. Hansel? Hansel, where did you go? Is this some kind of magic trick? Not a trick, Gretel, a treat. Hansel must have set it up. Look, we've all been given a huge slice of Black Forest Gatto. Ooh, Black Forest Gatto! Yummy! Dig in, everyone!